Today's question comes from Whitney in Missouri. I'm a saver and my husband is a spender. We set up a budget when we got married and included an allowance for each of us to help monitor our spending. He has been reluctant and not a good follower of our budget. Is having this allowance something that you suggest? If so, how much should we allot for our personal spending and how do I fix the issue of my husband going over the set amount? Oh man. Um, well, a couple of things, Whitney, that stood out in your question. We set a budget when we got married, so it's not like we set it last month. So I'm curious how long the discussion has been, how long you guys have been married, and because the encur my encouragement would be that you guys talk about it every month, and the allowance, is it a good idea? Yeah, the word allowance is always weird for me, but I always say to have a personal line item in your budget. So for our family, for instance, there's a Rachel line item, there's a Winston line item. Actually, our kids even have their own line items now. So I just know, okay, when we're spending it, like this is this is where it's coming out of. Um, and that amount is going to depend on your income and where you guys are in the baby steps. So uh, how do I fix, basically, how do I fix my husband? Well, Whitney, you don't fix your husband. I'm sorry. That doesn't, it's not how it works. Uh, you do have to talk to him, not preach at him, but come at these conversations in a way that you can express what is going on in you, whether it's frustration, whether you're scared, whether you don't know what to do, whether it's you long for him to be more involved. I mean, expressing these needs in a way that is not um, putting him down, right? Like I feel like some savers, which can, tend, can be more of the nerds in the relationship, can get very legalistic and it's this way, this way, this way. Here's how much money you have. And when you do that to your husband, like the dynamic changes, it kind of goes from this like marriage to a mom to her son or something. Like it gets weird. So, um, yeah, like your language is that way. Not yours, Rachel, the person in uh, Whitney. giving him an allowance. Yeah, Whitney, this sounds like you're his mother, the yeah. way you worded this, not his, not his wife. And so, like, he won't stick to his allowance. It's like, oh my God, what is wrong? So here's the thing. You need to sit down again, and the two of you need to decide what you want your future to look like and what you're willing to do to get to that future instead of he needs to stick to his allowance. He's a dadgum grown man. He should stick to his own allowance because he wants to hit the goals that he's agreed to. Square your shoulders, Bubba. Man up here. Okay? This is not your mama. This is your wife, and you're supposed to be part of this team pulling the harness. And so you guys need to look out there in the future together, hold hands and go, there's where we want to go. And here's the price we're going to pay to get to where we want to go. And we both want to get there. So we're both going to pay that price. And that includes, I'm going to limit my personal spending to this. And you're going to limit your personal spending to that. And that's what we're in agreement to. Not, I'm going to be, you know, schooling you up every yeah. time you misbehave. So the bottom line is, is I, th I don't think we did a budget. I think you did a budget and told him what it was. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, here. yeah. And so I think he needs to get his butt in gear and emotionally plug into co-leading this household. This is your wife's son. It's not your mama. And so man up and take take the, take your share of the responsibility. And lady, quit babying him. He's not your little boy. And that's the kind of thing that we're talking about here. Now, that's language that people don't like in today's world. Well, go listen to another radio show then because that's the way this really this crap really works. I've done this for 30 years. And so, um, you know, you guys can sit down there together, love each other, love your future, say, gosh, I'll do anything in the world for you except stick to my allowance. See, that that's the problem is the word means that you allowed him to have money. a certain amount right, of money right. and he didn't stick to it right well it ain't your job to allow him it's yep. our job to decide what we are going to do yeah that's the point that's the way this stuff the the language in this reveals it all yes and what happens so many times in marriage when it comes to money is the spouse becomes the enemy right it's like well he he or she won't oh uh. and yeah there's issues there in a, in a tactical way that if they are just going and spending tons of money you're trying to get out i get that but instead of seeing your spouse as the enemy, look at the things that are not being done or look at the debt. Like, like have things out there that are the issue and you guys lock arms together and look at the problem. Your spouse isn't the problem. Um, yeah, so there's and, and, you know, you do a great job of teaching about this on the budgeting stuff in Financial Peace University. This idea that 
and I, I forget the, the you do better with the language than I do because I'm just kind of mean about it. But this this idea that that um, both of you have to step up, and, and this I there a, a lot of people had model had parents modeling for you, and you took that model, and it was a bad model. And they, they, they didn't mean to. They weren't, they weren't bad people. But, um, you know, Dad just worked, and he never looked at the money, and Mama handled all the details. And Mama paid the bills. And so Dad was emotionally, when it came to the operation of the household, yeah. subservient to his wife. Yeah. Or Mom is like, well, I don't know. My husband takes care of me. I don't know what I'm... And she's over here, and she's deficit and is emotionally not plugged in. Yeah. And is not being a fully developed grown-up. Yeah. In, in the situation, both of you have to be fully developed, emotional, mature grown ups pulling together for the same goal. When we see that, we see people change their lives. Absolutely. That's that's it. That's well said because both extremes are not good. You're not going to get it on both extremes. But this is not a mansplaining thing. No. And it's not no. a momsplaining thing. No, no. And it's not trashing your parents' thing. It's none of that. Yeah, it's no, yeah. There's no victim or entitlement stuff in here. It's simply. You are not, listen, I'm not good with money. I just, I let my wife handle it. And she's so much smarter than me. You're not doing her a favor. You're not a blessing to her. And you, even though you paid her a big compliment, she wishes she didn't have all the weight of the decision-making on her shoulders. Well, my husband's really good with this stuff. His name's Dave Ramsey. He knows, he tells everybody in America how to handle money. So I don't have to handle money. Those words never left Sharon Ramsey's mouth. (laughs) She wants her vote to count. She wants her voice to be heard. And, oh, yeah. and, and not in a nagging way, no. but she is not, just take care of me. I'm a little Southern Belle, and, and you just take it. She's not that woman. Yeah. And, yeah. and because she's like a full grown, mature woman. You yeah. know, I mean, oh my gosh, this is what we're talking about here. Both of you step into this thing, and then you'll go win.